Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel Machining with Joe and in today's video we're going to be eliminating the weakest point on a mini lathe and that is the compound rest. If you ever get excessive chatter it's normally because of your compound rest. So it's about time we bin that off. No, that's a little bit extreme. We're not going to be binning the compound rest. In fact, we're going to be making a replacement for it out of this solid cast iron block. And what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to easily change between my compound slide and a solid tool post block. That way, if I need to cut tape as I still can, I can just swap my compound rest on there. But for the majority of the work I do, I think the solid tool post is going to be a lot better option. Like I said a minute ago, it's going to increase rigidity, which in turn should reduce any chatter and improve the surface finish in my work. So let's quickly look exactly how I'm going to do this. Currently then, my compound rest is made up of these two blocks here. And in total, they are measuring in at about 35 millimetres. So I've managed to acquire this two inch block of cast which is 70 millimetres square. And what I want to do is replace that with this. But as it sits right now, it's way too high and definitely not square. So I need to take that over to the mill, machine it down so it's at the same height and also make sure it's all square. And once I've got it to that point, I can think about drilling some holes in it and using the existing mounting points for the compound rest along with two additional holes that I'm going to be drilling and tapping into the top slide and mount this straight onto the top slide. To make machining this tool post easier, I've just cut off as much material as I can from the bandsaw like you just saw in that video. Next thing to do now is I need to square this block up before I take any material off of it. To do this, I've got our solid tool post on one parallel on the back fixed jaw and on the front movable jaw, I've just got this aluminium welding wire to hold it in place. So I think I'm going to square up all four edges and then once we're happy all four are square, I can then sit it down and begin decking it to get it to the final dimension that we need to be our fixed tool post. So let's give this a go. With this first side faced off now, I can rotate the part and repeat this procedure again. Right, now I've got my four sides all perpendicular with each other, I now need to make sure my top and bottom part of this block are perpendicular to the sides. So to do so, I need to start off with machining whether it be the top or bottom. So to do this, I'm going to use a one, two, three block, resting it on the side of my vise and pushing down, I'm going to butt it up to the, my workpiece. That way I know this is all going to be perpendicular to each other.
Now that we've got our solid tool post mount all machined, I thought it'd be a good idea just to check this with a lever dial gauge. So what I want to do is I've got this set to zero and having this on a flat plate, I'm going to run across it and see what the deviation is all the way across. So to start with in this corner, we've got zero. So let's just span across to the other side. And that's gone up 0.01 millimetres. Down to this corner. And that's 0.0. 0.01 millimetres in the other direction. And over in this corner at zero. And so for my first time doing any serious machining. This has actually turned out really well. So down on this side here, we've got a reading of zero. And as you move across, we've got 0.01 deviation. That's a hundredth of a millimeter there. So I'm really happy actually with this. It's turned out really well. And we've got pretty much zero run out, which is brilliant. So next thing we need to do now is mount this on our lathe and see where we're gonna be drilling our holes to mount this onto the actual top slide itself. To be able to accurately drill these holes then in our tool post mount, we're going to need a reference point. And for this, I think I'm going to use this bottom left hand corner down here. I'm going to mark that X. So if we imagine that's our zero point, and it's also going to be the zero point on our block in a bit later on when we come to drill the holes, we can work out where our holes need to be in relation to that. So to begin with, this hole here, So that hole there needs to be 39 millimetres away from this edge here. And it needs to be 18 millimetres up. So from there I can copy the measurements on the bottom of the compound rest and know exactly where the other holes need to be. After copying the holes off the compound rest, they're 18, 29 and 40 millimetres from this edge here. So that's an 11 mil gap between each one, which seems quite consistent throughout. So I'm gonna say that's a fairly accurate measurement. So the next thing to do now is put our block back in the milling machine. So I need to zero off using an edge finder on this bottom left hand corner. And when you see me next, I'll be making the holes ready for this tool post to fit over this. Back over on the mill then, and I've used my edge finder to find the X and Y position and then minus half the diameter of the tip to give me an exact zero position. I'm now setting my X reading to 39 millimeters as that's the measurement I measured on our top slide where our holes need to be. So just edging up to 39 now. And we are, we're there. So from there, I need to be able to drill my holes. So our first hole is at 18 millimeters. So I'm just going to set this to 18 mil, 18 millimetres there. So I need to drill this hole. So let's put a little bit of cutting oil on here. So I'm going in straight with a 6 mil hole, just because it's cast iron so it's really easy to drill. Try to give that a go. We're through. Hole number one done. And next we need to move back to 29 mil. So not touching my X position now, just on the Y. Bang on 29 there. So second hole, here we go.
And we are through for the second. Third and final hole then. And we need to put 40 millimetres for this one. And just finally, before I remove my work from the vise, I just need to counterbore these two top holes here to allow for the head of the cap headed bolts. So I'm just going to plunge down 6mm with an 8.5mm drill bit. Right then, moment of truth. Let's see if this tool post is actually going to fit. Well, it's on the locator. That's a good start. See if the bolts go in. I think that one started straight away. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, we're in. We are tight. So that's... That right there is absolutely solid. So really excited now actually, because the only thing really left to do is drill a hole to take the stud to accept my quick change tool post. So, this is a little bit less scientific. So I up roughly where I want it, which is there, and then get a center punch and center punch it. So just go grab one of them, two seconds. That one feels like a good fit. So I think I'm going to go away and drill that and tap that to take an M10 thread. And when I come back, we'll test out the tool post and see how much more rigid it actually is. then as you've just seen the solid tool post mount is all done and I've just tested it out by doing a few cuts on some 12L14 steel and I've got to admit the uh, results are pretty good so I've done a 0.4 millimeter depth of cut and a 0.6 millimeter depth of cut and the results in that were really good so I want to finish in today's video by parting this off and seeing just how rigid this is and see if we get any chatter because that was the main reason I wanted to convert to this solid tool post because on the mini lathe you used to get a lot of chatter when parting off even just parting off aluminium so we'll give this a go and we'll see what the results are so a little bit of cutting oil on there and away we go let's give this a whirl Straight away I can make notice a massive difference. This is parting off this 12L14 steel really easy. Getting really nice chips as well come off of it.
this is amazing the difference this has made. I'm really happy with this. And nearly there. And we're there. So I've got to admit that's an outstanding result. Really good at parting off and even on the surface finish when turning down stock that has greatly improved. So I hope you've enjoyed this video today. If you're thinking about doing this solid tool post mount for yours I'd say definitely go for it because it's a very good upgrade to do on your mini lathe. Other than that guys please subscribe if you haven't already and go back and check some of my previous videos out.